Hello all, my name is Ankush Agniyotri. This is the continuation of the Angular series. This is part 13 of it. If you haven't watched the other part, I suggest you to watch that first. Link is in description and also please subscribe the channel to get the latest notification on this series. So today we will talk about the Angular HTTP service. Angular uses the HTTP client to make the HTTP request like get, post, put and delete to the backend server. The Angular HTTP client module is firstly introduced in the Angular 4.3 version. The new API is available under the package angular 4 slash common 4 slash HTTP. This is the replacement of the old HTTP module. The HTTP client makes use of the RSJS observables to get the response from the HTTP client. So that's why hence we need to be subscribe the observables to read the response. So let's switch to the application architect try to understand why we need a angular HTTP client so initially what we are doing is we are reading a static user array and adding a record to it and updating it and removing it from the static array so but in real life application what we need to be do is we need to be save all the user data or whatever your information into your database read it from the database update it from the database and insert it into the database or delete it from the database so do that we need a HTTP client so let's switch to the Visual Studio code to see how we going to be implement this HTTP client the first step is we need to be open your app.module.ts file and then you need to be import HTTP client module which is inherited from the angular package angular 4 slash common 4 slash HTTP the next thing is you need to be open your user.service.ts file in this you need to be define your API base URL I have built this API for this tutorial in in the .NET Core framework using the Visual Studio and it is hosted on the port 56299 so this is my base URL of the API and here I am passing some headers like the content type application JSON here you can pass some security token if you have to pass your API and then on your service constructor you need to be firstly inject your HTTP client service and then on your method where you are retrieving a user list you have to be inherited from the observables and tell them what you are expecting it from your API and then we will use of the HTTP client and then a get method where you tell your method what you are expecting it from the API as a response back if you are met with any kind of exception so you can add a exception handle over there using the pipe operator so I am adding one small method error handler in which I am retrieving error message and throwing it back straightforward and second in the add method we are posting our user data into the JSON format and we are also passing our header into that particular call and simply I am adding a pipe operator to handle the exception and then similar for the get user by ID here I am passing a URL and everything will be the same get method and for updating a user you are making a put request passing user ID passing user data into the JSON format and your options and finally to remove a record you are calling a HTTP client delete method and you are expecting this user data and that's it you are making a call this is the change that you need to be implement on your service file and then switch back to your user list this is the last step so initially how we are retrieving a user data into our constructor we are calling a user service so let's shift this code to the refresh user method in this method what we are doing is we are same calling a user service but the additional part is we are subscribing that method because this method is using the observables and using the HTTP client so we need to be subscribe it to read the response actually so after getting the data back from the API we are assigning it to the user list object that is that is the only part similar in the delete what you are doing is you are passing a ID subscribe the method and then you are again calling a refresh user method this will rewind your grid and similar in your add.user.component file where you are managing your add and update in your method what you are doing is you are calling a service subscribing it passing your user data and then you are navigating to the user 
so the only difference in when you are using a service or using a static file you need to be subscribe it if you are using a angular services and as TTP client using the observables so you need to be subscribe it to read the data if you haven't subscribe it then action will not taken or basically the screen will not refresh or angular component will not to get to know we have to be refresh it so to read the state we need to be subscribe it so let's quickly open the terminal run our code and pm start we'll compile our code and host our code on the port 4200 which we all know so it hosted let's run it so let's click on the user you will see a blink of it now you will see a data if I open the browser inspector go to the network tab and refresh it you will see we have a call over here to the user API in this we are getting a response this call is make to this request on the port 56299 to our APIs so let's quickly do other CRUD operations like adding a new record so I am adding a new record here give it a rating add a DOB hit save so you will see we met with the exception in the API side so if you open your browser and do it again on the console you will see you will met with the exception for this okay so this is how we can maintain or if we met with any kind of exception so we can see it so same for adding updating a new record open your calendar I'm changing it date to 22 to 8 hit save you will see its date is updated so let's try to add again a new record and this time we will add a breakpoint on here so you will see and now I hit the save button you will see we met with an exception so it is saying identity insert is set to off so basically what we need to do is on our API on the SQL server we have to be make it turn it on that is totally a separate concept that doesn't relate our tutorial so open its property so I set it on its save so it's automatically turned on so what we need to do is open our model basically I refresh it so that it is in sync hit save run our API again so how we can create a backend API this is a totally separate concept the link is in description if you want to be learn how we can create a API so in .NET Core so you can learn it from there so let's resolve this problem run the API again on the port that we are using it so it's run go to your console again hit save this time we are not getting any error it saved successfully you will navigate to the user list screen here you can see you have a two records now now you can refresh your page your data will not vanish because it is saved into your database so that's it for today and sorry before leaving we will also try our delete operation so let's click delete you will see it is deleted from your database so that's it from today see you in the next lecture in next lecture we will try to understand or implement one more angular concept that is the angular model we will use a third party ng prime dialog to see the user detail on that particular model screen so see you in the next lecture bye